Um, and then today's uh, topic, the ad hoc topic will be uh, shared by Wen Hao, which is um, our um, community com uh, contributor. She will share the uh, cache design for now and the future in network graph. And so um, actually one thing to, to mention is uh, we actually are changing um, the fre frequency of the community meeting and I will make it every four weeks instead. So we will see if it goes well in, in this new frequency. And if you have any suggestions or um, new ideas, just let us know. Uh, so you, you can find everything in, in this etherpad or from our uh, Nebulograph community repo, which is the Nebulograph community under uh, VSOP's GitHub um, organization. And uh, so we don't have new members to introduce today. And we will have this meeting uh, every four weeks. And uh, we will go through uh, some specific topics that anyone would like to uh, bring. And uh, we can have the sync discussion in this uh, stage. And anyone would like to uh, bring any ideas can uh, let us know in, in Slack, in GitHub or, um, uh, discussion, or uh, send emails to us. And uh, yeah, I will go through the uh, project heartbeats real quick. So, mm, uh, in the last uh, four weeks, we have a bunch of uh, updates in, in a torching the, you know, the ecosystem of level growth. Uh, one of the first one is uh, our contributor uh, helped create um, my baddies integration for level growth. And the repo is under Nebula Contrib uh, organization. So this, this is the link. So if you are interested, just uh, feel free to uh, check out this repo. And uh, we also uh, received uh, uh, some contributions uh, regarding the Flink connector. One of the big things is, uh, is getting started to support uh, Flink Circle and uh, uh, Spike Liu and uh, uh, Liu South CS7. They are working together uh, on this uh, domain. And there is actually one, uh, there are actually one uh, PR merged. Uh, this week. Also, with the help of this this, this working, uh, we now support up to uh, 1.14 of the flink. The other one is uh, we this week we just merged a PR uh, to to help users to leveraging the PySpark to uh, using Nebula Spark connector. So that one was uh, contributed by me. And uh, then I will uh, briefly uh, preview uh, some of the contents of the 3.2.0 release. So in, in this page, they, they are all uh, the enhancements. So the first one is uh, we actually re revisited our default uh, configuration values. We add a bunch of uh, more uh, in a default uh, configuration so that user don't have to dig into the system to figure out uh, some of the configurations. And we we'll change some of the default value to a, a one that make more sense. And uh, you can see we make a bunch of optimizations on specific um, operators um, in the query engine. So please expect the performance um, Optimize, optimize, optimization. Uh, and basically most of them are related to uh, match query, but some of them are related to the subgraph and the path, find path uh, query. And uh, a part of uh, those uh, performance improvements, uh, this is a new uh, 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 syntax that's added support, which is the extract 
function in, in the mesh query. So you can do some more expression and uh, regular expression uh, uh, thing with the help of this, uh, this function. Uh, the final one is uh, we are optimizing, uh, optimizing uh, the memory allocation with the uh, arena uh, allocator. So this is an another improvement on performance. And uh, actually you can see there are a bunch of uh, bug takes uh, that I will not dive into here. And uh, then I want to uh, uh, bring uh, Wen Hao, uh, our uh, community contributors, uh, for the sharing regarding the Nebula Graph uh, cache. Okay, let's start. Hello everyone, uh, this is Hao Wen uh, from Nebula Graph. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about uh, the Nebula cache design and the future of Nebula cache. So before I talk about the, uh, the issues that we are gonna solve and how we solve the issue, uh, let me first briefly introduce some background of Nebula Graph. So uh, in Nebula Graph, we are using adjacency list to represent a graph because adjacency list is good for getting the neighbors of vertex. It's also memory efficient and it's good for mutation, like adding or deleting vertex. And with adjacency list, uh, it's easy to partition and uh, it has high concurrency by using BFS. Okay, and we use key value pairs to represent a, an adjacency list because key value store is very uh, mature storage representation. And the diagram here shows the uh, formats of the key and values in Nebula Graph. And here it mainly shows the key and values of vertices and edges. And what's being highlighted here is the uh, vertex IDs in vertex, in vertex and the edge. And, we, and the vertices in Nebula Graph are partitioned by hashing vertex IDs. And edges are partitioned by both hashing and key ranges, which is essentially the source vertex ID in that edge. By this means, all edges of a vertex will be stored in the same partition as a source vertex. Now, the key value pairs look like adjacency list. So with this design, uh, the BFS uh, in Nebula Graph uh, from a given vertex will be translated into many prefix six and scans of edges in the key value stores. And the get property of a vertex will be translated into get operations in key value stores. Now let me briefly discuss the issues that we are going to solve with Nebula Graph cache. Actually, um, the issues that we are going to address uh, come from our findings in the graph database storage access patterns. The first finding is uh, that vertices in the graph database usually have low space locality. <coughs> Let's take an example of this uh, simple query, get neighbors of a vertex, um, uh, which are n hops away. Okay, and let's use this tree structure uh, graph uh, to discuss to, to discuss the whole process. So first, uh, let me use the laser point. So first, it will try to retrieve the edges of this, this source vertex uh, in the database. And we already know that the edges, uh, all the edges of a vertex will reside in the same partition as a source vertex. Okay, and after retrieving the edges, um, basically the keys of the edges we can easily get the destination IDs uh, of this edge, which points to the neighboring 
vertices. Okay. And we know that uh, in nebula graph, we use hashing to uh, partition the vertices. That means the neighboring vertices and uh, the source vertex vertices may or may not reside in the same partitions. Okay. <clears throat> and th that means they may not reside in the same storage. Okay. And, and this process will continue if we are going to retrieve the properties of the neighbors, which are more than one hop away. So essentially, um, sorry. So essentially in the, uh, in the diagram here, uh, we have a lot of vertices. And because we are using hashing functions to partition the vertices, these vertices may reside in different storage. So the, what it brings about is uh, retrieving the properties of multiple vertices will usually require accessing multiple partitions. And if we have, uh, if we want to traverse the graph and, we're, and retrieving the properties of vertices, which are n hops away, um, n is greater than one. And then the, ran the number of random vertex accesses will increase exponentially with the number of hops. Therefore, uh, the vertices will usually have low space, lo low space lo uh, locality. And we know that in RocksDB, um, we use block cache to provide some of the caching capabilities. So that means the vertices in the block cache in RocksDB have low space lo locality. Okay. And the, the second key findings is about empty key access. And we know that in graph database, um, um, uh, data is a, a, a schemaless, which means the schema uh, of, a, of data in graph database uh, is not fixed. And how it is achieved is by using tags in Nebula. So uh, let's look at an example here. So we have a vertex and we have three tags and uh, a tag and these tags are person, student, athlete. And the vertex can have, uh, can be associated with one or multiple tags. So vertex can be a person, can be a student, can be an athlete, or any com combinations of these three. Okay, by this means, um, vertices in the graph database can have uh, different schemas, okay. And assume we have a query like this. Uh, it means returning the properties of vertices, which has a tag of person, but return the properties of this kind of vertex with all possible tags. And we already know that uh, a vertex may be associated with one or multiple tags, right? So how we uh, accomplish this in Nebula Graph is by concatenating the vertex ID with all the possible tag IDs and then construct all the uh, vertex keys. And then try to retrieve the properties in RocksDB with, with the, all the possible keys. And if there's a hit, we know um, the data exists in RocksDB and then we retrieve the data. If the key doesn't exist uh, in RocksDB, then we know uh, this vertex is not uh, not associated with that kind of that particular tag ID. So what it brings about is it will cause a lot of empty accesses in RocksDB. Okay, and uh, these actually are the two key findings um, that we come across um, when, uh, in Nebula storage access patterns. And then how we improve this is by designing um, our Nebula storage cache. And this is the architecture of the Nebula storage cache. And uh, it has a component in the RocksDB part and components out of RocksDB part. And in RocksDB part, we still uh, provision um, uh, a block cache, uh, which, is, which is very essential for some like uh, uh, field blocks, index blocks. Okay, and also block cache uh, can hold uh, uh, edges 
uh, because edges will usually have better locality than vertexes in graph database. And out of RoughsDB, we, uh, we provision a, a cache space by using cachelib. And we further divide the cache space into two pools. One is the existing cache pool and the other is the empty cache pool. And the existing cache pool is mainly used to store the, uh, the key and properties res which reside, uh, which exist in the RoxDB. And the empty cache pool is mainly used to uh, cache the empty keys, which were queried but do not exist in RoxDB. Okay. And he, this is the configurations of, uh, of the storage cache. So let me briefly introduce, uh, talk about them one by one. So this is a main switch. The enable storage cache is a main switch for the storage cache. And this is the total capacity that we allocate to the storage cache. Okay. And, okay. I, I, and, and pay attention here that the block cache size is out of this section. So it's, 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 it's an existing option, a configuration option in our uh, configuration file. So uh, here, the, config the configuration here, it only uh, manage the, 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 storage, uh, the storage cache space part, uh, which we implement by using cache lib. Okay. And the configuration here um, is a very is a very important configuration, which is very sensitive to the performance. So it requires you to put an estimated number of cache entries on this storage node in base two uh, logarithm. And if you don't provide enough, um, I mean, if the number here put is uh, too too low. Uh, which which means it is much lower than the actual number of ca uh, entries in the storage node. You, you you may suffer from low performance. Okay. And then these two sections um, uh, are the configurations for the existing cache pool and the empty cache pool respective uh, respectively. And the first section is uh, first. This is a switch for vertex pool or, or the existing cache pool. And this is a capacity for the existing cache pool. And this is a TTL for the items in this existing cache pool. And the second one is mainly manages the empty cache pool. So here is the switch and capacity and TTL as well. So he, uh, he, here is the um, performance improvement that we can achieve um, by using the Nebula cache. So first with this go step, go one step query uh, with attack, uh, which means uh, we explicitly, explicitly specify which tag they are, we are going to access. So there will be no em empty keys uh, when um, running this query. So we can achieve 20% uh, latency decrease. Okay. Uh, directly with the existing cache pool. Okay, and similarly, um, if we run this fetch neighbor properties of a given tag, again the tag is specified, so there will be no empty keys. So we only provision the existing cache pool. Okay, so we can achieve sixteen percent latency decrease. And the next two queries will. Um, try to access the data with all the possible tags. So there will be a lot of empty keys. Okay, so for go one step, um, if we provision both the empty cache pool and the existing cache pool, we can achieve 49% latency decrease and a 77% QPS increase. And for go two step, uh, we can achieve uh, uh, even more latency decrease and the QPS increase. This because it's, it's more than one hop. Uh, as I dis discussed earlier that if we have more than one hops, the number of random accesses for vertices will increase exponentially. So the more steps you have, the, um, the higher potential uh, performance improvement that you can achieve with the Nebula cache. Okay, um, let me briefly talk about uh, our future projects. 
about Nebula Cache. Um, the first two is about the, our uh, products in cloud. So you, you may know or not that we already have a product in, uh, uh, in public cloud. And uh, uh, we are in our next few projects, we are going to provide uh, a memory cache in cloud to improve the performance and also the local storage cache uh, to, prov to improve the performance uh, for the system which put data in object storage in the public cloud. And we are gonna also provide a cache for other, for, uh, in other uh, layers in the Nebula architecture. For example, we can provide um, cache for the, query, for the query result. And, and we are also, also gonna uh, provide a cache for the graph structure. So uh, um, even though we, have a, we may have a, a very huge uh, uh, graph database, uh, but the structure of the graph is, is typically very small. So it is very um, um, easy to just put the whole graph structure in the memory. And, and f uh, this can accelerate a lot of uh, like uh, ana uh, analysis queries. So if you are interested in any kinds of these projects, uh, you can contact away. So if you are interested in any kinds of these projects, feel free to uh, drop a message to Wei or, or in GitHub so we can uh, collaborate in the future. All right, so now I will give time to uh, Wei. Well. Thank you so much for uh, excellent sharing. So, um, uh, so this is actually first time that we have, uh, we are trying to invite uh, contributors and community um, on different uh, domains of network graph. So if you are interested in any other uh, topics or domains, just let us know. 